So, welcome back. We have been looking at frames and we have seen that you know they talk about aggregation hierarchies and abstraction hierarchies and interestingly about inheritance essentially. Now, let us see that one aspect of looking at frame systems is to see them as distributed spreadsheets which we can use for uh, some activity that we are doing, some kind of planning. So, they are not just linked data structures. We saw that you know we have links to other frames and stuff like that. They can be alive with procedural attachments. Just like in a spreadsheet, when you change some value in some cell, there are formulas sitting in other cells which, which will also change the value of whatever is stored in that cell. So, in that sense, propagation can happen. We also saw that this was happening in the program PAM when we had this request. Remember, requests are their terminology for rules and focus is where the request is focused and target is where the effect is felt essentially. So, the moment something changes in the focus, something changes in the target essentially. So, in that sense, a little bit like what happens in spreadsheets, uh, we can have procedural attachments which are propagating effects. So, they are like spreadsheets, but they are with additional structures because spreadsheets are flat structures if you have used uh, one of the commercially available ones. But here we are talking of hierarchical structures and different kind of hierarchies. So, they can help in for example, bookkeeping while planning. So, let us look at a small example which illustrates this fact, uh, a frame system for travel planning. So, imagine that you are an IT manager in a software firm and you have developed this frame system which can be used by people in the firm whenever they are traveling essentially. So, it will help them uh, plan their trips and depending on your ingenuity, you would automate a lot of things for them. So, let us look at this example. Uh, so, a business tour for example, may constitute of a first leg that you start planning travel from home, then you have to stay in a hotel, then you go to the next leg and so on. So, imagine that you have this proactive software which will give, which will fill in default values and uh, allow you to create, ex extend the plan uh, by filling in everything that is already known essentially. So, of course, one component of such a planner would be something called trip. So, a trip part can be a very generic idea. As you can see, it is a generic frame here, uh, which has a start date, uh, uh, end date, it has a cost associated with it, it may have a payment met method associated with it and so on. And trip parts can in general be of two types, one is the travel part and one is the lodging part essentially. So, they will have some of, so whatever is common is stored in the super class and whatever is specific to the two kinds of frames travel and stay will be stored in the individual parts essentially. So, for example, in the travel step you will have an origin city, a departure time, a destination city, arrival time, mode of travel, then what was the original you know, origin city lodging, what is the destination city lodging and so on. So, all this will be put together into one large network of information. Likewise for lodging stay. So, both of them are sub concepts of trip part essentially. So, travel stuff is a trip part and lodging stay is a trip part. So, certain slots like mode of travel and payment can also be automated essentially. So, for example, you could do that based on some distance, uh, this thing that if you are traveling for a certain distance, then you have to go by air. If it is very short, then you can go by some other mode and so on. So, they can be filled in by default, but you should be allowed to override that essentially. 
So, let us look at an example just to get a feel of this. So, let us say this is a trip called trip 21 and this is the high level thing which talks over the whole trip essentially. So, it begins with the first step which will point to that segment and maybe by default the system for me if, if this is for me say the origin is in Chennai and I fill in the start date and the return date or the return date is filled up after I finished planning my trip and saying okay I will start from here, I will go there, then I will stay there for two days, then I will go there and, and then I will say I will return home. Then the system should you know create all the relevant frames, instances of frames and create this whole structure for me. At the end of it, it can perhaps compute the total cost and uh, talk about payment methods and so on. So, for example, for a trip which I made recently to Puducherry, uh, the frame system would say that, okay, this is where I want to go, I am going to Puducherry and then of course, there may be another step and so on. And then in Puducherry, I stayed in a particular hotel called Accord Hotel. Uh, and some of the information is copied from one frame to another. So, this is what the frame software system should assist in doing. So, I do not have to manually fill in everything. Then maybe the next travel step uh, and you can automatically fill that this is the uh, origin is Puducherry and the destination uh, I can add something. If I do not add then it will by default it will fill in my hometown essentially and the origin lo lodging stay was a quad hotel and that kind of stuff essentially. So, you can see that such software which is in information is structured in the form of frames can be quite useful. Okay, so, the next thing we want to look at is inheritance from multiple ancestors. So, and we said that you know we want to look at if there is going to be a conflict how are we going to handle that. So, let us do that uh, in the next session.